topic where we're going to try and share with you. Show of hands. We are. I can't, just can't hear you, Janice. Your voice? Yes. You have a speaker? And we can't hear you. Okay, I need a mic. I can try and project louder. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, with show of hands, let's see how many of you agree when I say a statement. We are energetic beings. Sure, folks. Okay. And we belong in a universe that's made of energy. So everything around us, the trees, the animals, Everything is energy. Okay, then we are all starting on the same page. Um, yoga is defined so many ways. Even we're all yoga teachers and we've been through the trainings, classic or not. And yoga uh, essentially comes to a definition that we can all start from for, for this discussion is that it is a state of being that we aspire to and reach. So and through my training, there's been, for example, classic hatha that teaches us asanas, pranayamas, meditation techniques that get us to that state of wellness. And one of the speakers said it beautifully, it's the space inside. So my topic today is about the space inside. It's the energy system. So, and all of the conversation that we're, we're going through now exists in, uh, and again, we're all yoga teachers, so we're aware of the kosha. So as a human being, we have five layers, five sh shields, or sheets, as it's described. And the only one of the five is actually the physical layer. It is very important because this is how we experience the contrast and are able to go through a, a, a time and space reality, which is our life time, the journey. But everything else other than that initial surface, the physical layer, is actually subtle. It is still part of us, it's still part of our making, and even more influential part of us. But it's not something that we can smell, see, touch, or it's not a physical thing, it's not tangible. And that's why it, it tends to be um, not as understood and practiced and attended to as much as our physical layer. So as teachers, we have to um, offer our help and teaching to students, and that happens mostly through group classes and yoga studios and retreats and so forth. So it is the asana that is our tool to help and reach. But there are other layers that we still need to bring into the teaching and the understanding. So as I mentioned, the, the energy system, which I will try and uh, introduce in 20 minutes, exists in our Pranamaya Kosha, which is the energy body. Um, like I said, Hatha Yoga teaches us asana pranayamas to reach a state of wellness. And then Tantra Yoga came and introduced the energy body, the nadis and the chakras and the currents and the direction of flow. And managing that is also another way to attain that state of wellness that we all seek and aspire to and also try and help and teach others to reach. So, our energy system, where does it live? In the pranamaya kosha. And what does it contain? There are a few keywords that we need to just quickly go through. So prana, prana is another very, very popular word used, defined in so many ways. Every time you uh, get a definition of prana, it's gonna introduce a new word or a new uh, perspective. But really, for the purposes of today, prana is beyond breath. Prana, breath is carried by prana. It is what directs your breath and energy throughout your body. So when you breathe, you're, you're bringing in prana, but that's not the only way you, you get prana. You get prana from nature, from the food. Um, so that's, that's, a, that's a key word. Usually we associate it with breath, and that's why when we do the teachings of pranayama, it's, it's 
prana, but it's beyond breath. We also have the chakras, which are the seven energy centers in the body. Uh, we have the nadis, which is um, the main three that we're going to focus on today are the ida, pingala, and the shushuna. So the reason that um, we need to understand this is, and I believe as a teacher, we need to know this energy system and experience it just as much as we do our physical body. So we need to know how to manage our energy within the body like, we, like you know your, your hands and your uh, asanas and how to get into any uh, shape in your body. We also, it's very important that we learn how to manage and cultivate the energy that we need. So this flow of energy, there are two directions that our energy flow in the body. I'm going to go back to this um, image to show. So we have the upward direction, which is basically going from everything physical into the liberated state. So in in yoga, your upward direction is labeled as liberation direction. It's because it's the direction where you let go of the physical and you go up into more uh, spiritual um, understanding and awareness. And we also have the downward flow, which goes from the crown to the root, and that is called the manifestation direction, which is basically you come in from uh, the your your spirit truth. And through your processing, you can bring it back into the physical. Both directions are, are equally important in our life because if we are only going from the physical to your um, divine uh, awareness, you will not be able to experience your space and time reality. So you will won't be uh, able to manage all the physical aspects of your journey. Um, ma uh, money, your family, um, and then the other way, if you are not able or your direction downwards from your um, the down, the uh, manifesting direction, you won't be able to manifest your reality. So you'll have great ideas that are never completed, um, and so forth. Does that make sense? So far, we're okay? Uh, there's other two directions that is our expression and also our receiving. So have you ever walked into a room, uh, that happens a lot with healers, you go and you meet a healer and just walking into the space where they are present, you feel an effect on your state of being. If they are truly connected and they are there to offer you something, if they are to serve you, just merely by being in their presence, you feel a change in your state. It could be already they've started their healing. That's because they're already emanating the energy. They're already expressing it out. And you are able to receive it. So it's an inward receiving, and that comes again from all the different sources that I mentioned. So it's your nature. Everything you see, everything you listen to, everything you watch, everything you eat does affect you. Whether you're aware of it or not, it has a, an effect on, on, and it leaves an impression. So, um, so that is your, your, your receiving um, and also for expressing. So if you are feeling uh, uh, blocked in your outward energy, you're not able to express, you feel depleted. Same thing if you're blocked in your receiving, you, you won't be able to receive um, all, all the love around. So with these two nadis that manage the flow and direction of your energy, there are seven main chakra or seven main energy management system in the body. Okay, there's a lot more chakras. Everything has a chakra, even the earth has chakras. But in our physical body, these are the seven main ones that you listen and hear and, and get to study about 
uh, most, of the, most of the time in yoga. And uh, in yoga, the journey towards your liberation, spiritual liberation, starts with the root. Now, your body has the ability, because of these centers, to process so many different types of energies. So you have food, emotion or feelings, action, which is your will center, love, which is the heart, and then we have the sound energy, which is your way of communicating and listening, our intuition, which is thought mainly, which is in our third, and then your crown is your chakra and gateway to connecting to your source in any way that you relate to the source. So the, the, the job of these chakras is to, if they are open and they are healed and the energy can flow from them to them as it's meant to be, then they will keep you in a psycho-emotional and physical state where you are connected to your true self, healthy, and um, in that state that we want, that state, that space inside where it feels um, infinite, but also you are aware of your true self, you can express and receive love um, in an open and healthy manner. Now, if any of these blocks, and we live in a world where these get blocked, whether from upbringing, uh, childhood, or even uh, as uh, yogis today, um, I for one, we mentioned traffic earlier, so I'm on my mat, nirvana, narnia, happiness, everything is amazing, I control my energy, it's exactly at the frequency I want, I'm about to go out, present my uh, expression to the world and, and teach yoga and train new students to be yoga teachers, and then I get into traffic and someone cuts me off, and guess what happens? Off center, immediately. The rage comes on. <laughs> Obviously, because I'm a yoga practitioner and I know better, I don't harm anyone else. I let my anger in the little car bubble. So if someone's looking, they'll see me screaming and shouting, but at nobody. It's just, you know, letting it out. So we live in a world that will bring in a lot of triggers and factors. Uh, and it will bring that frequency out of balance. What are the ways to heal and keep your energy system um, in a state that is supportive for your purpose? It always comes down to yoga. But I don't, I don't just mean yoga as in asanas, because definitely asanas is a way for us to keep this body that holds the system in a healthy, strong, and circulated, the flow is going place. It's your home. It's what holds all these other layers that make us. Meditation and pranayama. And really, uh, most of the questions that I get about, essentially, how do I help the state? How do I go from, how do I heal my uh, grief? How do I heal my, even some physical ailments, because I said these are subtle and not touched, but their effect on your body are very intimate. If your energy flow and your energy centers are not balanced, you will manifest these in a lot of physical ailments, uh, almost always. Um, nowadays, a lot of modern medicine are sending us to most of my students come from doctors that have, in the end, said, you need to start doing yoga and meditation. Because all the physical ailments that they went to treat have now become, uh, they, they need the help of, of yoga and meditation and, and pranayama. So I'm also told that I'm running out of time, but what I would like to, to for, for yoga teachers, um, what I want you to get out of this is even in your group classes, your energy body, energy management system needs to be part of the teaching. Uh, and I also do group classes and I am limited to time, 
but there are ways to start to bring this um, element into our classes. So Shavasana is your best bet. So most of the time in Shavasana, instead of making it 30 seconds at the end of the class, try to start to introduce it more than three to four uh, to five to even ten for teachers that do a little bit more restorative in the end. Because that's when you are able to let the students go, even if you've just done an arm balance, inversion, headstand workshop, allow them the stillness in the body and with guided meditation and certain pranayamas to access the deeper layers allow them to feel how it feels in every one of these centers. And eventually you're um, giving seeds. And this is how they will start to understand and explore and research more and be able to help themselves because they will know where in their body are they blocking the flow of love. Um, now, it, Anybody that's been on the spiritual journey most likely has come across Rumi, who is a Sufi poet, but very, uh, for me, when I was going through my training and teachings, uh, it was one of the main uh, literature that really helped me and, and gave me a lot of guidance. And this statement, or this, I don't know what it's called, poet, po poetry, is basically what we're talking about. Your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. We come into this world as nothing but pure frequency. Babies, children are nothing but pure energy. They are love. And anyone that's been around a child or a baby will know exactly what we're talking about. That's why they are so pure. You have no choice but to shelter love and, and um, yeah, shelter and love. So, but then with our life and our journey and also the purposes and things that we came and agreed to come and do, things happen and we start creating these blockages. Could be upbringing, culture, any beliefs. So, and that's all stored in your inner being. That's stored in your deeper layers. And that's why it's important to understand how it works, where it is that you need to bring your awareness and intention to heal so that you are living your purpose in a beautiful, healthy, strong body and a very calm and balanced inner being. That's it.